The world is always changing, like trends that come and go. There's quite a message telling us to take action and join a positive movement. This is sustainable travel. Far from being just another trendy term, it is a call to action for sustainable living and mindful travel that resonates with our love for exploring the world. Sustainable travel means finding a way to maintain tourism long term without harming natural and cultural environments. Sustainable travel is about valuing the background, looking after our natural resources and respecting the local communities and cultures. As travelers, we need to be more aware of the pollution we create during our trips and how that affects the environment. Journey to Tomorrow is a documentary exploring sustainable travel's environmental impact. It highlights trains as a means of transportation and their role in promoting sustainable living. The film features insights from four experts, a sustainable traveler, a tour operator manager, a director of a destination tourism office, and an editor from a travel magazine. Together, they uncover the positive impact of sustainable travel, the challenges it faces, and their envision for sustainable travel's future. Whilst the journey's longer, I don't feel that it's a wasted time. There's a lot of alarm bells ringing. So as an industry, if we want to continue to be able to take people to experience the world, I think we need to be very conscious and actually take action now. In today's world, where wanderlust often clashes with the need to preserve our planet, there are those who stand out as champions of sustainable travel. A sustainable traveler shares what inspired him to adopt this sustainable approach to travel. So I travel a huge amount because of my job and quite often I find myself jumping on a flight on a, a Friday evening, being in a destination over the weekend and then jumping on a flight over a Sunday evening to come back ready for the working week in the UK and I suddenly look back over the last six months and realise that my carbon footprint from flying was absolutely eye-watering. still need to travel, I still need to be in the destinations but I took a step back and tried to think about how I could do it in a more sustainable way. With a commitment to reduce the environmental impact of flying and embrace sustainable practices, Chris embarked on a personal challenge a few months ago. His mission? To travel overland from London to Greece on a self-imposed budget of £400, all in the pursuit of attending a sustainable travel conference. Setting out from London on a Thursday evening, Chris reached Crete by a Monday morning, successfully navigating a series of destinations. His journey unfolded as follows, London to Paris, Paris to Milan, Milan to Bari, Bari to Patra, Patra to Athens, Athens to Heraklion and Crete. Over the course of almost five days, Chris relied predominantly on trains with brief boat journeys. Despite inventable delays and cancellations, Chris discovered that the essence of travel still lies in the spirit of adventure. He emphasizes the importance of remaining open to meeting new people, sharing experiences and embracing the unexpected. Throughout his expedition, he reaffirms that there is always time for exploration and overland travel presents unique opportunities. Chris's journey serves as an inspiration showcasing the possibility of sustainable and adventurous travel, proving that the path less taken can lead to profound discoveries. Are travel destinations still in demand? According to Booking.com's recent sustainable travel report, 76% of travelers express a desire to explore sustainable options. Therefore, the question arises, how can a tourism board effectively promote a destination committed to sustainability? People want to travel and our job is to um, promote travel because when we talk about travel we talk about livelihoods, we talk about entire communities that are based on tourism to promote travel to these areas. This year our focus was on, on train travel um, also with regards to our ambassador Roger Federer. The transportation is a key element because it's, it's one of the biggest um, generators of um, CO2 and other emissions so that's why we, we do push the trains. We try to explain to people that if they visit Switzerland they don't need a car, 
they don't need any other transportation. They just buy a train ticket and that ticket gives them the uh, uh, opportunity to travel throughout the country. Surprisingly, 44% of travelers are unsure where to find the sustainable alternatives according to a recent study from Booking. Including a tour operator could be a potential solution to this dilemma. Taking a closer look at companies like Intrepid Travel, an adventure travel company offering tours around the world, we can explore how they incorporate sustainability in their strategy. So Intrepid was founded with the belief that travel should give back. So rather than people arriving into a destination and almost just taking what they wanted from that destination that we could do much more than that. I think I might give an example here of Europe um, and European travel. Our European product is actually almost entirely train based now or public transport based which means that as a product uh, range it's a really sustainable um, product and offers people a really great experience in terms of on the ground. What we actually find from customers and the feedback that we get is when we incorporate land products versus flights, customers actually see it as part of the trip and get to see and experience much more, whether that be speaking to other people who are travelling on the train who actually live in the country or just actually seeing the views out of the window versus flying. In a world captivated by quick getaways and convenience, the promotion of sustainable travel encounters challenges like the added cost for travellers. There's always ways about making it more cheaper. When I try to, to travel within a budget, I've managed to go in sort of standard seat, book further in advance, use interrail, travel around and jump on and off train, shared cabins on overnight trains. I thought that was going to be a horrendous experience. I like my own space, but I've really enjoyed it and embraced it. I understand there might be some challenges into promoting sustainable travel but also promoting the other different destinations you have as a tour operator. So how do you overcome this challenge? It's been something we've been on a bit of a learning journey with. Customers obviously need to travel to get to the start of our tour so people do fly to get there. So we need to take that into consideration and also look at the community-based tourism and we see that as two sides of a coin. There's the sustainability and the decarbonisation piece but there's also the economic and social benefits of travel in many communities around the world. Tourism contributes one in every 10 jobs global and without travel, without tourism, there are many communities around the world which would lose a massive stream of income. Convincing travellers to contemplate their environmental impact and resist the allure of last minute flight is no small fit. What truly drives the audience's desire for sustainable travel? A travel magazine like Wanderlust, by incorporating sustainability and sharing it with their subscribers, can play a vital role in influencing and inspiring a more conscious approach to travel. But how do they do that? In every issue we have specific features that will look at elements of sustainability, so we even have a column uh, on sustainability. Annually we now have an issue called the Green List, so every year we look at places, people, uh, properties and initiatives that focus entirely on sustainable travel. Wanderlust readers are definitely very attracted by rail travel which is a sustainable way of travelling. Obviously it emits fewer emissions, inherently a way of going more slowly and seeing a place maybe more up close and personal and it allows the traveller to spend more locally and to see a different side to a place. Is there like an advice you would give to individuals who would like to adopt this, something they should check out, look out before starting this journey? I think the, the best thing to do is to work out where you want to go. Try and be flexible. Try and not think of it as a losing a day, um, taking two days rather than a two hour flight. You need to think about the whole experience. A central question addressed to the experts throughout this documentary is how they envision the future landscape of sustainable travel. The future of sustainable travel, I think what is changing right now is the perception of the travelers. People will ask more and more for sustainable options. I think it's just going to become the norm because it has to be. We have to travel sustainably if we want to continue traveling. And it's not just about us as travelers where we would like to go. Travel has to be a force for good. I think shorter haul travel and slower travel, I think, will both be trends that we'll see from customers. I think people are probably going to end up taking longer holidays rather than lots of short breaks. And so we're ultimately going to see that um, train is going to become a, a bigger part of um, short haul travel. And I think people are just going to grasp that excitement and find that they can travel more sustainably. 
It's important to understand that the purpose of embarking on a sustainability journey is to examine how and why we do things, step out of our comfort zone and gain new experiences. By doing so, we can only achieve the benefits that sustainability has to offer. So keep that in mind the next time you plan your journey.